If you played Undertale, then you probably know all about W.D. Gaster and his experiments, but even more intriguing is Gaster's new experiment in Deltarune. You see, while we were able to piece together that Gaster, the genius royal scientist's old experiments, involved extracting the determination from human souls, we're still in the dark of what further experiments he's secretly conducting in Deltarune. But by putting together the clues hidden for us, we are able to form a distressing picture of a far greater experiment going on inside Deltarune. Whenever I play a game, I always get excited to find the hidden easter eggs scattered around the game's world, but sometimes I'm disappointed that it's just an easter egg and not something more in the game. And Deltarune could be no different. It's hidden gaster songs, accidental phone calls, and mentions of things that seem like gas or skulking around in the game could just be fun easter eggs to discover. But I don't think so. There is just too many. Too many easter eggs, mentions, and cleverly hidden details that, rather than standing alone as their own individual easter eggs, they tie together as one overarching narrative. One continuous experiment started by Gaster that he is still bent on finishing. An experiment that may spell trouble for every human alive, and might just be a driving force behind shaping the course of Deltarune's future chapters. To show you what Gaster is currently up to, we first need to take a riverboat ride back to Undertale, where I'm going to give you a much different look into Gaster's original experiment. Most of you have been through Gaster's creepy true lab, where you most likely would have read the entries on the wall, particularly the famous entry 17, where Gaster is describing an event that he has been observing for some unknown amount of time to two unconfirmed people. And true to my word, there is something unique about what Gaster says, not in terms of guessing at the game's lore, but in terms of using tested scientific theories that tell us what Gaster might actually be referring to. The entry reads, while the portion where Gaster talks about it getting darker is important, I'm more interested in the part where Gaster says photon readings negative, which when properly understood and added back to the rest of the phrase, really narrows down what he's actually looking at. A photon is essentially a massless particle that contains energy and travels at the speed of light. Regardless of the device you happen to be watching this video on, the photons being emitted by your screen are responsible for carrying whatever you're seeing to your eyes. A photon is basically light. But the thing is that photons, because they are massless, are generally considered to be neither positive or negative in terms of their charge. So what matters here is that when Gaster says photon readings negative, he means that there are no photons present, no light emitting or even bouncing off of the object he's seeing. And the implications of this information is massive. Given that in order to see anything at all, the information of what you're looking at has to be carried by photons, which can bounce off of pretty much any object like the moon, are constantly vomiting out of your phone, and are just absolutely everywhere. It's hard not to get a single trace of a photon reading off of anything, except for one possibility. Something like a black hole that sucks away any light particles, emits nothing, and has the ability to spread. Something that is essentially like looking into a void or the complete absence of photons. Something like a Dark Fountain, Gaster is looking into Deltarune and studying the Dark Fountains. What other black hole-like objects that don't allow photons to bounce off of them is there for him to be looking at in either game? To add further to this, we also know that either the two timelines of Undertale and Deltarune are happening side by side, or rather Gaster is able to see what is happening in Deltarune at any point in time he wants, thanks to an accidental call that our main character Frisk receives an Undertale from who was possibly Spamton in Deltarune, who asks Frisk if he can speak to Gaster before realizing he's called the wrong person and sings one of his silly jingles before hanging up. But let's look even deeper at another strange instance that clues us into Gaster's true goal. We know that Gaster's followers, named Goners, who are gray in their appearance, are generally aware that they are in a game, and give us clues not only to Gaster's well-known disappearance, but as to how he ended up 
able to tamper with the world of Deltarune, mentioning to the player that Gaster fell into his creation. He shattered across time and space, being forced to watch over a world in which you don't exist. Gaster clearly fell into one of his creations, which has been thought to be the machine covered in Sans Workshop that would shift him all over different realities. This is possibly how Gaster ended up falling into the world of Deltarune that we know he was already studying. But what was his true goal with studying and now experimenting on Deltarune? Well, let's look no further than entry number five. Entry number five, if you remember, reads as, I've done it. Using the blueprints, I've extracted it from the human souls. I believe this is what gives their souls the resolve to change fate. Let's call this power determination. Gaster was able to successfully extract the power of determination from humans who can use their determination to save and reload the game at will and was wanting to give it to monsters who lack it. This was the original driving force for Gaster's experiments to be able to give determination to monsters, breaking the barrier and freeing them from their prison in the underground. But what if Gaster didn't want to just release monsters from the underground? What if he wanted to use the power of determination to go back and save the monsters from ever losing the war against the humans in the first place, never having to experience the suffering they endured in the underground, just like in the world of Deltarune. But he never got to see this reality come true for Undertale. Our human Frisk released the monsters for him at Undertale's end, and instead Gaster has now turned his attention to his new experiment in Deltarune, which is far more problematic than before for any human. Leading up to Gaster's off-putting new experiment, Gaster's presence in Deltarune is first shown with the opening sequence labeled Goner Maker, where Gaster directly talks to the player and has them create their vessel, which funnily enough is completely gray like all of Gaster's followers. Other than knowing that Gaster's songs can be found throughout the game, that the Dark Fountain in Chapter 1 has the same pattern as Gaster's Goner Maker, and Gaster restarts or turns off the game if you name yourself or your creation as Gaster. Gaster, he's around. But did you notice how calm and collected Gaster's gray followers in Undertale were, with the knowledge that they are in a game, but practically everyone who's encountered him in Deltarune has been driven insane? Namely Jevil and Spampton, with seeing the shop owner saying that Jevil's world has become dark yet darker, referencing Gaster's entry 17, while Spampton wants the player's soul to break free from his puppet strings that he's now aware of. But why? Why would Gaster suddenly go from messing around with determination to help all monster kind to driving them insane, as if they were part of a newer, darker experiment. Well, helping his fellow monsters didn't matter anymore. Upon getting shattered across space and time, or even if it happens to be another Gaster that we meet, the goal of giving determination to monsters is done, as all of the monsters in Undertale were freed anyways, and in Deltarune have been shown to already possess determination. And much like Noel and my theory or teary on Deltarune's tea, I believe that Gaster has now set his eyes on a much bigger prize. Growing up, I wanted to be just like my favorite characters, to be able to move like them, be as cool as them. Like many people, I found them motivating, and Gaster serves as a great example of how we all start off being motivated by basic needs such as water, food, safety, or even freedom that once meant develop further into higher order desires desires and ultimately end with fulfilling whatever potential you think you have, or better said as whatever potential you're aware of having, which in Gaster's case happens to be far greater than any other living monster. Gaster and all of his experiments started off wanting to save his fellow monsters, but he became so inescapably aware of the human players, but rather than being overwhelmed by it, instead he realized that his existence or Currently, a feeble video game character could be so much more. Gaster's desire turned to becoming as powerful and controlling as the human players existing in the reality outside of his own. I mean, after all, how could he live as he has knowing this? After Gaster's accident, we have almost exclusively seen him communicating directly to the real world of the players, starting off with Undertale's Twitter page 24 hours before Deltarune's release, a series of cryptic messages showed up in Gaster's unique speaking style as Gaster tweeted to the players the message, Have you been looking for me? Oh, wonderfully, I have been looking for you as well. I have something, something I want to show 
something I think you will find very, very interesting. I look forward to creating a new future with you. Gaster then greeted the players upon entering the game. But even more than that, when playing the game, we find out that Gaster is still continuing his determination experiments from Undertale, but this time for a new dire purpose. While Undertale largely was about the choices players make in the game, in Deltarune we're told that our choices don't matter, that it's not about us the player, and perhaps as a way for the creator Toby Fox to express himself just like it is for Gaster. I think that Gaster has now begun running a new experiment on the players themselves. He wants to see what we can do, what we're truly capable of as a determined soul that can move between different realities, and thus what he would be capable of. Once having extracted determination, studied the world of Deltarune through his photon test, and made aware of the separate realities of the game and the real world, Gaster is determined to use Deltarune as a testing ground for not only if monsters can truly handle the reality of their existence and possibly take it to the next step, but for just how much the one thing we the players have in spades being determination is truly capable of. Gaster's made his choice on the reality that matters most to him. But hey, if you don't believe that Deltarune could possibly be the world Gaster eludes to and controls, then here's one interesting fact to consider. If you open up the folder Deltarune is installed in and check the properties for the application, you'll notice that the version number is labeled 0.666, the number consistently associated with Gaster. If you're a fan of using your brain to figure out some of science's biggest questions, then check out these awesome videos and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss my next Deltarune theory.